In this video, you will see how UFT1 uses artificial intelligence to compose a single automated test script that will run on multiple platforms and browsers. With UFT1, you can test more, in less time, and with less effort. In this video, we will talk about the position and the relation identifiers, how to use them, and what are the best practices. So we will start our example from this screen. This is the shopping cart screen of the Advantage Online Shopping website. And we have added one item here. And let's assume that we would like to remove it from the cart by clicking the remove text here. So let's open the AI identification tool. I've already did the identification on the screen, save a little time. So we can see here that we have here the remove text. If we click it and choose to edit, we can see that the command that will be generated is find text block, remove, click. So everything is okay here and there are no problems. We'll add this step to our test, run it, it will find the remove text and everything will be okay. When the situation becomes more complicated is if we'll add another item to the cart. So let's choose any item, some tablet for example, and add it to the cart as well. Now if we go to the cart, we can see that we have two items here. So let's perform a reinspect of the screen by clicking the reinspect button here. We can see that we have here the remove of the tablet and the remove of the laptop that we want. So if we click it now and choose edit, we can see that the command has changed. It doesn't contain only the remove text, it now contains um, the constant mic from bottom and one, meaning that we want to click on the, on the remove text that is first from the bottom of the screen. We can also can see it here in, under the position. We can see that the, the chosen position is bottom and one. So by default, the AI identification will always give each control that you choose here a unique identifier and it will add automatically the position identifier to it because the position is something that can be easily calculated from the screen. So now we can add this step to our test and it will work, but it will work only in this condition. The reason for that is that if we'll add another item to the cart, then the new item may be added to the bottom. And then the, the, the description that we have added of clicking the first remove text from the bottom will no longer match the actual remove that we wanted to click on. So this is an example of a use case where using the position identifier will not be ideal. In some other simple cases where there is some sort of an icon on the top of the screen and on the bottom of the screen and you know that it's always there, in those cases, using a position identifier may be sufficient, but in many cases, the preferred way is to use the relation identifier that we will cover shortly and not the position identifier. Another advantage of using a relation identifier and not position identifier is from a readability point of view. If you would have written a manual test to explain to a manual tester which remove text you would like him to press now, you would probably bind this remove to the item that you would like to remove and you would not tell the tester click on the remove that is first from the bottom or something like that it will not be clear enough that means that using a relation identifier will make your test clearer and more stable now let's see how we can use the relation identifier so we'll start by choosing the remove that we would like to interact with which is this remove now we'll click on edit now, instead of using the position identifier, we would like to use the relation one. So we'll just click the plus here, which says add relation. What it does is it actually filters out all the controls that can't be used as a relation and leaves only those that can. So of course, the, the most logical one to use here is the name of the product. So we can just click on the text here. We can see that now a blue dot is being added to this control and once we hover over it the the control that was chosen as the anchor is being highlighted let's see that again you can see the text is being highlighted you can also highlight the text from here by clicking this once we have chosen the correct relation we can click add to test 
If you look at our test in the UFT, you can see that the following line was added. The syntax is as following. We are looking for a text block containing the text remove, and it has an anchor on the left of it. And here is the description of the anchor, which is the find text block and the product name that we would like to remove. That way, no matter how many items will be added to the cart, we know that we'll click the correct remove. In order to make this uh, more readable, you can always extract this line into a variable, something like this. Just to test our code, we can execute it now. And as you can see, the correct remove was pressed. We can also see it in the report here. See in the image that the correct remove was found and clicked. So to summarize, whenever a control is not unique on the screen, you can use either the position identifier, saying that it's the first from the top, the third from the left, and so on, or you can use a relation identifier, binding this control to another control that is uniquely identified. Usually the best practice is to use the relation one, it's the way that we see it the screen is the way that you would actually explain this operation to, to a manual tester. Usually it would be easier to understand and less sensitive to changes in your application. Please note that you can add a position or a relation identifier even to a control that is currently uniquely identified on the screen. If for example we'll re-inspect now, so the screen now contains only one item because we have removed the laptop. So if we take a look at this remove now and click edit, so we can see now that it doesn't have a position identifier or a relation identifier because it doesn't need it because it is uniquely currently on the screen. But if you are building your test from scratch, you, you can think ahead and to understand that sometimes this text may not be unique. So even now at this point, you can add the relation from, by clicking here and choose the item. And that way, when you click add to test, it will be added with the relation. So you can plan ahead and whenever you are adding a control or a text to your test from the identification, you can think on the question of whether it will always be uniquely identified or whether it depends on the current situation of the application. If it depends on the current situation of your application, maybe you should come up with some relation identifier or some position identifier when you add it to the test, even though it's not needed now. So that's all for this uh, video about uh, position and relation identifiers of the UFTAI. Thank you for watching the video.